Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast Midweek Supplemental. Coming up, American Tomahawk's new Model 2, two new knives from Doug Ritter, And we take a look at the top drop points in my collection in a very cleverly segment I entitled uh, uh, Drop Points, Drop Points Everywhere, But Not a Drop to Drink. Uh, A take on the rhyme of the ancient mariner by Samuel Coleridge. Uh, I don't really know the whole poem. It's quite a long one, but I always liked that line. And actually, I got it. I got it slightly wrong. It's nor a drop to drink, but in our modern day parlance, it sounds weird. Uh, before we get to any of that, though, it is my uh, cho- my chance to show off a knife, and uh, this is what I'm carrying today. This is the pocket check, and since um, we're recording this podcast on the morning of July 4th, I have a very uh, patriotic carry to show you. Today, I am carrying my <clears throat> Protec Strider SNG with this very patriotic looking uh, uh, G Carta handle scale. I love this knife. I got this one from the Knife Whisperer. Thank you, Joe, for the awesome smoking deal on this great knife. And uh, I don't carry it too much because <clears throat> technically I'm not really uh, allowed to carry it out and about. So I don't carry it much. Um, but today I'm going to be in, I'm going to be making ribs. And I'm very excited for that. And so this will be my my main knife. Isn't that cool? That that uh, G Carta by G L Hansen and Sons is just so beautiful. And the red, white, and blue theme I also find quite beautiful. <clears throat> Excuse me. So today I will have this in pocket. And then since we're on the drop point kick today, every knife you see today, if it's not a tomahawk, will be a drop point knife. And uh, that's a rare thing for me. Uh, I, I usually think that drop points are pretty vanilla, but when I really sat down to look at it, so many knives are drop points or modified drop points that I figured uh, it, it deserved a little highlighting today. Uh, my next drop point, my next carry knife today, is a fixed blade. And yes, I'm carrying the Steingraber Performance Knives oof, Shark. There it is right there. A little rough start to the... Uh, to the podcast today. I'm going to smooth it out now. Uh, I'm carrying the Steingraber Performance Knives Shark, a beautiful drop point blade, thin and very thinly ground. This is an excellent utility carry. This is just an excellent knife all around. Of course, I always comment on how you could really flex this into any sort of knife you want. And by that, I mean, yes, this could be a tactical knife too. Sharks are quite well, let's just put it this way, tactical animals. And this uh, emulates both the profile of a shark head and also a shark's tooth. And uh, it is a drop point. So today this will be the fixed blade I carry. It's rare that the fixed blade I carry is smaller than my primary front pocket carry. So I'll show you my back pocket carry. Today's a three knife day and uh, rarely do I carry all the same blade shape. It has to be something unique going on. You know me, I like, if I'm carrying a Tanto, I also have to have a Bowie or something else on me. Today, they're all drop points because that is the theme. And uh, another American knife today, I'm carrying the GEC Bull Buster, which is just a funny name to me. It is uh, the the number 21, and it is the large sod buster style uh, knife that GEC makes. They make the 71 also. And uh, that is the smaller bull nose, but this is the bull buster. This is larger. Bull buster, okay, it makes me laugh because it sounds like ball buster. Every time I say it, I'm like, that's just a funny name. Uh, This is in green linen micarta. You can tell it's linen because of the fine weave. And uh, this is just a nice, big, this is the biggest knife I'm carrying today. That's, That's interesting and rare. Usually the slip joint is the smallest thing I'm carrying. And uh, today everything is all cattywampus. But you know what? We can roll like that because we are flexible and we are um, adaptable here at the Knife Junkie Podcast. So yes, today I've got the very patriotic SNG 
uh, by ProTech and Strider. Of course, the classic Strider design. I have the Steingraber Performance Knives Shark, and I have the GEC number 23, Great Eastern Cutlery uh, number 23, Bull Buster. Three awesome knives, all, uh, all flat ground and all drop points today. <clears throat> A rare occasion for this 4th of July. Uh, I know you're listening to this on the 7th of July or 6th of July, but <clears throat> please let it be known. I hope you had a wonderful day. And I hope you uh, celebrated our independence from, well, from everyone else. We are a great nation here. And all you have to do is go to another one to remind yourself how good we have it here. Uh, a lot of people, you know, criticizing our country. In some cases, I guess rightly so. You can always... Uh, self-improve. You can always improve what you've got, but uh, it, it's a good reminder. Just, you know, go somewhere else and be there for a week, and then you'll remember how good we have it here. Okay, that's enough of the preaching from me. Um, we have a couple of other things. We have a new Gentleman Junkie uh, patron. That's our top tier of patronage on Patreon, and his name is Jared Strasbaugh. Thank you so much, Jared, for joining the uh, the Knife Junkie Gentleman Junkie crew. I don't know, family? I don't know. It is a group of dedicated knife junkies, and I really appreciate it. I know Jim appreciates it, too. It helps uh, keep the infrastructure going. It helps keep things going here, period. Not only that, but there is a bit of um, bit of a psychological benefit that I get from knowing that people would trade money for this. Um, so thank you very much, Jared. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, you are now entered into the monthly Gentleman Junkie knife drawing. And uh, I have yet to determine what that will be, but I'm looking at four or five knives over on my on my special shelf of things that don't get assimilated into my collection for one reason or another. Either it's a loaner knife or it's a knife that I'm going to give away or or what have you. So I'm looking at some knives over there and whatever it is, Jared, it will be awesome. And you are now entered to win it for free. So thank you so much, Jared Strasbaugh, for becoming a Gentleman Junkie patron. It's greatly appreciated. This past week, I received a uh, phone call, a rare phone call on the listener line. And um, this gentleman did not leave his name. So I want to know who it is. Um, you know, you'll probably hear or see this show. And when you do, just let me know who it is who uh, who uh, left this on the listener line. But it's a pretty awesome message. It was uh, regarding the my uh, most beautiful blade shapes, or not most beautiful blade shapes, but my favorite and most beautiful knives in my collection, according to me, um, all folders uh, in that edition of the show. And he chimed in letting me know um, one, one that I forgot, quite frankly. He said, hey, Bob, Knife Junkie, regarding episode 225, man, I don't know how in the hell you forgot to list the Spartan Harzi folder as one of the best modern folders ever made and I think is beautiful, and I agree with you, sir. I agree 100%. Excellently designed, and I carry it every day. If I don't, for some reason, I carry the DPX Hest folder, one of the 15 iterations that Robert Young Pelton designed. Excellent blades, man. They're just great looking and hardworking. You're not going to break those damn knives. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> most, I just wanted to drop my opinion for what it's worth. Cheers. Well, I'll tell you what, sir, it's worth a lot because uh, not only do I want to hear what you have to say, but I happen to agree with you. The Spartan Harzi folder is a spectacularly beautiful folder. I also think everything that uh, Mr. Harzi designs, Bill Harzi Jr., is gorgeous. And uh, I have this one. It's a it's a special one for me because uh, Curtis Ayavito offered to engrave it after he came on the podcast. He engraved my logo in the handle, so this will always be one of my favorite knives anyway. Even if it were a piece of junk and I didn't like it, I'd like it for that reason. But this is a spectacular and outstanding folder and also quite beautiful. So whoever you are, I agree, and let me know who you are. And, uh, and I'll mention your name on an upcoming podcast. Speaking of coming up, uh, we're going to take a look at the new American Tomahawk Company uh, Tomahawk. But first... Help support the show on Patreon, as you just heard. Uh, you get Knife Junkie stickers, a mention on the podcast, early access to the Sunday interview and midweek supplemental shows, 
uh, and you have access to monthly knife gig giveaways, uh, which is always fun. Uh, those happen on the third Thursday of every month on Thursday Night Knives at 10 p.m. Eastern. And uh, Jim makes up this cool wheel, and it's uh, it's all randomly certified uh, through the website. Uh, and we spin it, and it lands on someone, and that someone gets a new knife in the mail the next week. Uh, see of the Knife Junkie podcast. Your support really helps keep the show going, and we appreciate it. So check us out on Patreon and see what helping us gets you. The quickest way to get there is by going to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So as you know, I've been on a tomahawk tear recently. So seeing this little bit in Knife News was exciting because at Blade Show, I had a good uh, chance. I had about a 20-minute a uh, conversation with Ryan Johnson of RMJ Tactical. The uh, they kind of revived tomahawks uh, at the beginning of the wars. Uh, in the beginning of this, uh, in around 2006, let's say uh, they came out with some tomahawks that uh, guys overseas were using in uh, combat operations. And man, this guy is very interesting. Our, uh, our Ryan Johnson. Well, RMJ Tactical, the tomahawk makers. They acquired American Tomahawk, a company that originally popped up uh, during the Vietnam War and uh, with their Model 1 Tomahawk. Uh, I think it also went by the Vietnam Tomahawk. Uh, anyway, they they foundered for a while, and then uh, Ryan Johnson and RMJ bought them a while back, and they've been uh, they resuscitating the brand under the RMJ uh, umbrella, which incidentally also includes Chattanooga Leatherworks, my favorite sheath makers. Anyway. American Tomahawk has just announced their Model 2, which I had a chance to pick up and check out at Blade Show, and it is so awesome, man. Uh, so th here it is right here. If you look at it, it has a bit of that um, uh, Viking look to it with the beard. It's a bearded axe here uh, with the with the uh, synthetic handle, which lightens it up a little bit as opposed to a full tang metal handle. And that's a 4.13-inch curved blade there and uh the beard the, the whole shape of that blade um is not there just to look cool and not there just to look like a uh, viking axe but that beard allows you to get your hand right underneath the blade and use the blade like a knife and um uh, you know for precision sort of carving work uh but the thing also has a hammer pole on it on the other side which i love so this is not only um you know, a pretty tactical tomahawk, if you will. But it's also very practical with that hammer pull. Uh, you could use that to pound in tent stakes and, you know, other kind of hammering uh, tasks. But really, it's a it's a it's a great utility tomahawk uh, that if you needed it for uh, other kind of business could no doubt excel. Um, so this is made of 1065 carbon steel, which is kind of uh, between 1095 and 1075. I'm sorry, it's 1060, not 1065. Uh, 1060. And um, just a great, uh, this is their model number two. Their model number one is their reversioning of the Vietnam Tomahawk with the, with the, um, with the point side and the flat blade. This, of course, has a longer 4.13 curved edge. And just from picking it up at Blade Show, and uh, kind of thumbing the edge with my with my thumb, you can tell it's very sharp, and you can do um, you can do a lot of work with it. But of course, it has uh, the sort of more wedge like pr uh, cross section, so you can still slam slam on it and do all sorts of work with it. Great looking tomahawk. I'd love to get my hands on one. Of course, um, with the synth synthetic handle, and it being an American tomahawk tomahawk, it has. Uh, uh, a lighter, uh, lower price point than the RMJ Tomahawks, which run in the 500s. Uh, this is in the mid 200s, I believe. So um, just a, a great looking piece. And man, I, I want one. What can I say? But there's a lot of stuff I want. All right, moving right along. Great Eastern Cutlery. One of the knives I'm carrying today is a GEC. Proudly, I love those knives. And uh, if you tune into Thursday Night Knives, our good friend, uh, Ben, of Jack Wolf Knives was at the gathering 
out there, not the gathering, what do they call it? The rendezvous up in, uh, in Pennsylvania for GEC and was talking about what a great place it is. And you can tell from these knives, they're just doing, they're just doing amazing work. Anyway, they have a new knife out. It is their number five, uh, a very small keychain knife, which just looks so cool. So, so far, it's only being offered in one cover material, that's Sambar, Sambar Stag. And it has a, uh, a little uh, lanyard loop uh, uh, manufactured into the end of it, into the spring end of it. And uh, it comes with a leather loop for attaching it to your, your keychain or for attaching keys too. This is bolsterless, as you can see, and uh, just an exciting little knife. It It is little too, at uh, a closed length of, let's see, what was it? 2.5 inches closed. That's a pretty small knife there, uh, at least in terms of a, a slip joint knife, but a perfect addition to your keychain. Um, I think it will make a really, it's a cool addition to their lineup, A, but B, it'll be interesting to see the different cover materials they come out with because uh, if you ever keep a knife on your keychain, you know that that knife takes some wear, just being next to your keys and your flashlight and all that stuff going in and out of your pocket. Uh, and and the wear that I've always appreciated, uh, I don't have my, my keys around me, but I've always appreciated the wear that the knives take on from being next to your keys. It sort of accelerates that kind of used look that I go for in other knives of mine, but fail to achieve because, you know, I have so many knives and rotate them uh, that no one knife gets a whole lot of wear. So the keychain knives do. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of materials they put on the covers and how they take on wear. Uh, a great choice for blade steel on this one, 440C. And, uh, you know, uh, most GECs are 1095, which is a great steel. I love it. Uh, but you could see how this is in your pocket and, um, you know, maybe some moisture from your body uh, gets onto them. You don't want these knives to be um, in anything other than a stainless steel. Also, you're running to your car in the rain, your keys are out. Of course, your knife is going to get wet too. Um, just having a stainless steel makes sense on this knife. Uh, and this knife is the number five keychain knife from Great Eastern Cutlery. Very excited. Uh, this is going to be one of those knives. You just better, better be ready. Better, uh, as, uh, as it as it goes, you better be ready on the website with your with your fingers poised to click when that one goes live because you know it's going to get snapped up. This is a pattern premiere, um, so it'll be a one that that goes pretty quickly. So check that one out. The GEC number five keychain knife. Uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of new Ritter knives. Uh, one of them is a Ritter Hogue, and uh, also a new Tomahawk in my collection. Uh, but first, before we dig in, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know each time we upload a video. And of course, right here tomorrow night, check out Thursday Night Knives. Have your phone ready. Have your computer ready and go to thenifejunkie.com slash join so that you can come on and talk to me face to face instead of just commenting, which I love, believe you me. Uh, it's great to actually meet people in person or in virtual person. That's 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. And I'm talking about Thursday Night Knives. That's Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern, every Thursday night. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. So today I'm going to show... Uh, two new Ritter knives. Doug Ritter, you know Doug Ritter. He 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 leads up, he heads up uh, knife rights, does a lot of great work all around the country getting these 
antiquated knife laws turned around and uh you know thanks to him we can carry a lot more than we used to be able to he is also a survival expert uh, aviation survival is the angle from which he comes at it because uh, of his flying past uh, helicopter pilot etc uh so you know his uh where is it his very, very famous, started out as the Ritter Griptilian when the OEM was bench made. And then uh, recently they went to Hogue and uh, this is the RSK-1. This is the mini RSK-1 with that super cool uh, G-Mascus. Uh, but he makes some other knives. He designs other knives. And I have a couple of them here with me today. And the first one is the RSK. RSK, by the way, stands for Ritter Survival Knife. And this is the Mark V. And uh, you say, no, that's an Altoids tin. Well, basically, it is an Altoids tin. But inside, you have a little survival guide, things you should put in here. And you have a little knife. This is uh, the RSK, uh, the Mark V. And it's meant to be small enough to fit in an Altoids style tin, uh, into which you can build a little mini survival kit. And just so you know, he's he suggests a mini compact flashlight, water for water purification tablets, wires for snares and traps, a little fishing kit, basic medical supplies, uh, signal mirror, whistle, compass, duct tape, needle and thread, safety pins, aluminum foil. All these little things can fit into this tiny little space along with this knife. And you have a little survival kit you can put in your in your daily carry backpack, in your purse, or whatever, uh, whatever you carry uh, with you, and you can pop this in the little center console of your car, and and you'll have everything you need. But this is the little knife, and you might remember this from um, CRKT used to make this knife, and now it's made in the same factory that CRKT produced it in, uh, but it is no longer a CRKT knife. Look at this, the Doug Ritter. RSK Mark V. What a cute little knife. And it fits in our drop point theme today. So that's handy. So this is a one and a half inch blade. Oh, actually, one and three quarters inch blade. And you have this little skeletonized handle to keep it thin and light. Of course, you could, and then this uh, 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 paracord fob on there, which really uh, helps with the grip because this is a one and a half to two finger knife here so that having this little fob really helps. Um, but you could also wrap this in paracord to make it a little girthier. Uh, but if you look at it, it is a really nicely uh, made blade because it is, it's got a decent thickness, a little <clears throat> about the same as the uh, mini RSK one. But uh, you've got a really broad shaped blade, a uh, broad blade here. And a uh, Almost well, a saber grind, we'll put it that way. So it's very thin behind the edge, but quite a stout little knife for such a teeny tiny little knife. And then, of course, you have this uh, um, thermo molded plastic here, uh, sheath fits nicely into you can hang it around your neck or whatever, just drop it in your pocket. But I love that this thing comes with the um, comes in the tin, so you can start building your survival kit today. And that's what I'm going to do actually. I'm gonna, I don't have a an Altoids tin survival kit, so I'm gonna do that. And of course I will, um, I'll tailor it to my suburban lifestyle. It might not have fishing hooks in there, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it, uh, I'm make it mine, you know, put, put the kind of stuff I need for around here. Uh, so very cool little knife uh, from Doug Ritter, the RSK Mark V. Sometimes I forget the mark numbers. Now, I have another new one from him, and it's also a fixed blade, but it's much larger. And this, man, I, I put this to a lot of use this past weekend. Uh, I had been gone for a couple of weekends in a row, and, uh, well, everything got overgrown. I'm always talking about the vines here in Virginia. It's very lush. And uh, so this was my divining knife for the weekend. I go through and make sure that the trees don't get strangled out because... Well, I love trees, I hate vines, and I don't need a tree falling on my house because of these damn things. So I go around and I cut even on my neighbor's tree, which I can kind of access if I reach over the fence. Yes, it's a little presumptuous, but they obviously don't care. So I'm taking care of their trees too. 
This is the Mark III fixed blade, <clears throat> the fixed bladed version of the Mark I. <clears throat> if you look at that blade shape, you'll see it here. It's in a very nice uh, Cordura sheath here with these quick, um, quick snap, uh, what do you call them, straps so you don't have to take your belt off. And I love when they, when they do this, when they split it here so you can put it over, um, you, can, you can flank the belt loop on your pants and it won't slide back and forth and around on your, uh, on your belt. Um, comes with a length of paracord here and a nice little thingy. I'm not sure what this is called, but you know, a little tension thing. But here's the star of the show. Look at that. That is a beautiful, beautiful S45 VN. Yes, that's right, S45. It's my first S45 VN blade. One, two, three, four and three quarters inch blade here. A high saber grind, a broad blade, so it gets very thin behind the edge here. And uh, as you can see, I didn't get rid of any of the stuff. I wanted to prove to you that I actually used this. Yes, that's right, I used this knife. This is no safe queen, people. And actually, it's so light, the whole package, the knife and the uh, and the sheath, that uh, I plan on doing some hiking, this just some day hiking this summer. And this will definitely be my belt knife for that because, um, well, it's a it's a very good size and it's a very good shape. And it's a just a great, great blade, uh, just sort of utility blade. Uh, but I love the lightness of it and it will come in handy. Uh, when backpacking, because, uh, you know, when I go on day hikes, and I've, I've done a few this summer so far, I, of course, bring a backpack, and I, of course, pack it as if I'm going to the jungle, and uh, I'm not expecting to come out anytime soon. So I always pack too much, uh, you know, not, not being uh, too experienced with this kind of stuff. I always pack too much stuff. So this knife will be a nice and disciplined choice, nice and light, very utilitarian and uh, good to go. So S45 VN, and you can see this G10 handle is same as the, uh, has that same radial pattern coming from the front front area, uh, the pivot area on the folders, uh, but that sort of radiating sunshine pattern, that's what it looks like to me, it looks like sunshine. It's just great for grip, it is great for grip. And it feels very comfortable. And of course, in keeping with the theme of this show, it is also a drop point. So uh, this is the R, uh, uh, the Ritter survival knife made by Hogue. It's the MK3, the Mark III fixed blade. And it is a handsome addition to this uh, RSK line, I think. And a welcome one at that. You know, when I think of survival knives, I rarely think of folding knives. I mean, you know. Any, any knife you have will help you survive. I usually think of a fixed blade. So I'm very, very psyched about this and happy to have it. And uh, even if you're not out there surviving, you're just out in the back 40, uh, cutting vines and such. In my case, it's 40 yards by 40 yards. Uh, you will love to have this uh, Doug Ritter Hogue knife. And Hogue, you know, they make awesome knives. And uh, it's the first Cordura nylon sheath that I don't hate, man. It's a great sheath. It's got a a nice, um, a nice sort of Kydex or, or plastic uh, um, liner so that you don't poke through it. So there you have it. Highly recommend it. Now I'm going to clean it because, uh, you know, I had to prove to you that I actually used it. And uh, now I'm going to obsessively rub it down with alcohol and get it uh, nice and clean so it can go back into my knife case. All right. The last acquisition of the week uh, is this most awesome Wingard wearables back ripper tomahawk. Uh, like I mentioned before, I'm on a tomahawk tear and I think this one will officially end this stage for now because I've been dying to get this ever since I got the Empress tomahawk by Wingard wearables. Wingard wearables uh, head, headed up by Zach Wingard and uh, his business partner is his wife and they're just making some cool stuff. His wife actually designed the quill, a little handy hole maker, if you will. Uh, you can hold it in many different uh, different ways and use it as a tool or use it as a get off me kind of uh, implement. But the star of the show right now is this Empress Tomahawk. Uh, it's got a 
beautiful hickory handle, which has been um, uh, file branded. So they, he heats up a file and, and uh, brands it and rubs it, it so that that gives it nice grip pretty much everywhere on this haft and then he rubs it down with linseed oil while uh while it's hot and it just soaks in there and uh, makes it nearly impervious to the to the elements you know within reason of course and um and then he has the the head forged he's got so the interesting thing about wingard wearables they're out of pennsylvania and they uh, work with several uh, blacksmiths and bladesmiths who forge out their tomahawk heads. The Empress tomahawk is cast out of bronze. Uh, due to the shape of it, it requires a different material. It's very, very hard shape to get uniform, uniformly forged. And, uh, and since that is a spontoon hawk and not meant for utility, but meant strictly for, you know, fighting, basically, uh, bronze works great. You're not, you're not, uh, you're not using it for chopping. Now this one, as you can see, uh, flexes from tactical and fighting with that nasty sharpened, this inner edge is sharpened, this nasty sort of hook here. And uh, it is also a chopping, chopping implement here with the uh, inch and a half long blade. Set at that very interesting angle. Uh, that angle there really accelerates the chop kind of like I, I call it sort of like a recurve for tomahawks recurve uh you know it has that sort of um uh purpose accelerating uh angle there and uh well i'm gonna do a full review of this and put it in in front of the table and or in front of the camera here and compare it to some other things uh but i had a couple of buddies over last night and uh well actually they've both been on the show and uh, one is a former paramedic and one of them is a former sniper and they were both ooing and eyeing over this. And uh, their wives were both like, what do you need that for? And I said, what, what don't I need this for? And then when I was done being smarmy about it, I explained that this to me is mostly a, a collectible. Uh, I, I don't use this in my day to day. You could use the chopping end uh, if you do some light chopping, but really this is a weapon and uh, Seeing as I don't ordinarily uh, use weapons, I keep it around just in case. Uh, let me just mention that the wearables part of Wingard wearables comes out in this, in the curve of this back spike blade here. So this curve is to be ergonomic. It's so that you can wear it against your body and it conforms to the, the sort of shape of your hip here. So just a beautiful, beautifully produced nastily designed um, ode to the sort of Iroquois nation tomahawks meant to be light. This is extremely light. It's actually lighter than, than my smaller Empress tomahawk meant to be light and facile and, uh, and quick in hand and uh, not really a throwing tomahawk though. I'm sure you could throw it to great effect, uh, but I'm not going to, I don't throw tomahawks um, because I don't like to break them. And uh, that's what I do when I throw things. I'm not a very good thrower yet, even though Jim got me that awesome book. Um, it has not quite sunk in. The information in that book has has yet to fully sink in. Uh, but uh, here it is, the Wingard Wearables Empress Tomahawk. They come out in very limited batches. So get on his list, get on their list over at wingardwearables.com and uh, get yourself one. You will be happy that you did. All right, so now I'm going to transition into drop point blades in a segment I call drop points, drop points everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Um, so I talk about this whole modified drop point thing sometimes, uh, and it usually comes hot on the heels of the mention of the reverse Tanto, which I think is a made up blade shape, though I'm starting to see why people call it that. Uh, drop points and modified drop points really you could almost call anything a modified drop point. And I hope to illustrate that uh, with the 15 knives I'm gonna show off uh, today. Because they take on different blade shapes, but if they have, if the spine drops to the point, it's a drop point. Now the ones that I can't really call a drop point kind of do the opposite. And that is like a Persian where it's swept up, 
towards the point or uh, mini uh, Bowie knives sweep up to the point with that clip. Those are clearly not drop points, but there are so many others. Um, and I'm just going to show off my favorite ones. Uh, and I call drop points vanilla at the top of the show. That is in no way a diss. Uh, what I really meant by that is that uh, oftentimes you'll find drop points don't have the flashy, scary, tactical look. Fourth of July, baby. Okay, so let's start here with one of my absolute favorites. And this this was prominent. This was the last one I mentioned in my uh, best looking folders. And that is the VSEP from Les George. So you can see a classic drop point shape here, swedged swedged if that's a word with a nice swedge beautiful edge here uh but this is kind of a um this is kind of a classic here and uh it is a, a main cast member in the uh in the knife junkie podcast uh family of knives because i think it is like i mentioned probably one of the most beautiful knives i have and oddly it's a drop point because, you know, I really tend towards the Bowies and the more slightly more dramatic blade shapes. But um, yeah, so this is probably my favorite of the drop point knives. But you know what? I'm not going to these. I'm going to consider them more like well, I shouldn't even say this, but more like children. So I'm not going to play favorites here. But there you have it. So now, uh, as shown off and mentioned earlier here, uh, this is the Hogue made. Uh, Doug Ritter RSK Mark I Mini, a, a, a lot to the name here. But this to me is probably the most practical blade uh, I have going here. And it is a drop point, and it is very much, um, I don't know, when I think of drop point, this is the knife, this is the blade shape that I think of. Simple. Uh, one that you could use, you know, in if you're looking at a drop point in the um, in the context of camping and and fixed blade knives, this is the kind of knife you really want to use for batoning because with a swedged with a Bowie style knife or anything with an upswept edge or upswept tip, you're going to start bashing that tip with your um, with your baton and it's going to gnarl up your baton. It's also going to, you're going to risk breaking the tip. And, you know, that's something I'm very good at doing. So a drop point like this or like this is a very, very good and practical shape. Plus, with a small knife like this, you're obviously you're not going to be batoning. But for this kind of cutting, it's also very comfortable. You can you have a little bit of that tip there. It's very comfortable and it leaves a great place for your finger. Um, and also with the drop point, it places the point in such a way that you don't have to cant your hand too much like this to get the tip in there if you're like cutting open boxes or something like that. I'd say the only knife that's better for that purpose, the only blade shape would be that Warren Cliff because you don't have to turn your hand at all. Okay, so the Ritter uh, Mini RSK1. Next is a beauty, a beauty. Uh, and of a really excellently engineered and designed drop point. This is the this is the Synapse from Vero Engineering. Another beautiful drop point blade. This one has the swedge again, like the uh, like the VSEP. Uh, it's not hand ground, but uh, you can see that beautiful machine satin. Just a gorgeous knife, and an excellent and very useful drop point blade this one i love because of that flipper that very discreet flipper uh it does not bang into stuff in your pockets at all and yet uh, it actuates incredibly this is probably one of my top flip well this is definitely one of my top flippers maybe my top flipper i don't know i don't know i'm gonna have to get another one to make sure it's consistent across the model line uh perhaps the large synapse uh but man these vero engineering knives um so worth the hype. All right, so the next one here is a Tanto, but it is a drop point Tanto, damn it. Look at this. This is the Medford Praetorian. If that's not a drop point, there's no such thing. 
and yet it is still a tanto. So that's what I was, that's what I'm trying to get at with this many faces of drop points, drop points, drop points everywhere. Even when you're looking at a tanto, you get this incredible, well, you get that very, very useful and, uh, well, that, that drop point shape. This is one that, uh, when it first came out, I thought the Praetorian was ridiculous. I was like, oh, okay, all right, we get it. You're a macho man. Uh, okay. But I ended up talking to him on the show. And yes, Greg Medford is a macho man, but uh, he also convinced me of this design. So I got one from our good friend Stu at Stone and Steel up in Vermont. And uh, man, this is an excellent knife. Even though it's hugely chunky and it, it might get a snicker or two when you pull it out, if you know, to the uninitiated. It's incredibly thinly ground uh, behind this hollow point uh, edge here. And it just cuts amazingly. This is a great knife. Um, you know, once you get beyond the, the robust character of it uh, or the overly robust character of it, it's, it's an excellent, excellent cutting tool and a drop point and a tanto. All right, I'm going to set that down there next to that other fantastic knife. Okay, so the next one is a, well, it's a beaut. This is one of the first hard-use knives that I saw that I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to get with this company when I can afford it, and that is Zero Tolerance. This was uh, this is the Zero 0200, or the Zero 200, designed by Ken Onion. It's got some of that uh, very organic Ken Onion look to it, but this is a recurve drop point a recurve drop point. So actually, as it turns out, most of my recurves are drop points. Uh, but this one I, I pulled out and wanted to show because to me, this is a very exciting design and uh, it's a very beautiful and, you know, that with that, those organic lines, it's a very beautiful and somewhat menacing design. And uh, so it, it, directly contradicts my vanilla statement about it. It is not vanilla. It is it is quite, um, well, it's aggressive looking and it's also very useful uh, with that recurve and, uh, and yet a drop point. So I, I think what I'm trying to get at here, I think the through line here is that my, uh, my sort of initial, uh, I don't know, looking sideways at the drop point because it's not exciting enough. I'm allowing that to melt away because I'm actually thinking about it and looking at my collection and realizing how many drop points I have and, and the fact that I actually really, really dig them, <laughs> even, even though they're not as dramatic as others. Like this one right here. Uh, I showed its automatic ProTech production brother earlier. This is the SMF from Strider. Look at that. Another beautiful and extremely useful. This one is hollow ground uh, drop point blade there. Interesting thing about the SMF or a good way if you're uh, new to Strider, a good way to tell if you're looking at an SMF or an SNG if you do not have it in hand. The SNG is the smaller one. The SMF is the larger one, obviously. But you can tell from the screws here, the SMF, the larger one, has three body screws along the top. So that's a good way to tell what you're looking at if you're looking at it in pictures or videos and they don't mention what it is. Just a classic tactical drop point blade um, and drop point, yeah, drop point blade. Uh, this one uh, gives you a lot of real estate on the handle, uh, but to me is always more comfortable choked up. That's this design to me. It's, a, it's more of a choke up knife. So that is the Strider SMF. Next, a mod, uh, an instant classic, a uh, a very uh, a contemporary classic, if you will. This is the Atom by Three Rivers Manufacturing, the TRM Atom. This one is wearing the uh, the wing milled pattern burlap micarta handle scales that uh, Marianne so graciously gave me at Blade Show, and uh, talk about a useful knife. This is useful and beautiful coming together here. Uh, it's a very, very thin and thinly ground uh, drop point. You got a saber grinder near full height uh, flat grind there and uh, just a beautiful blade shape. And it it's almost spearish in that uh, the point is right al uh, aligned with the uh, pivot 
And uh, sometimes I think of drop points as having a more rounded off tip. This one has a nice pointy sharp tip. And uh, this is definitely one of my favorites in this collection. But I mean, I, I guess I'm going to say that over and over because each one here has a special meaning to me. You know, my brother gave me this one, got this one from Stu, got that one from Vero himself. Uh, you know, Doug Ritter gave me that one. So they all have a sentimental value of some sort or other. But that TRM Adam, if I have to cut something, that happens to be uh, probably one of the best right here I'm going to be showing. Next, another one with immense sentimental value and also just sweetness factor is the Spartan Harzi folder. This is a drop point. If you look at that, it's got the swedge again. And uh, a swedge on a drop point is makes it uh, really uh, much better for penetrating. And that's that's why you'll see swedges on, well, on most, what am I trying to say here? Most knives benefit from the swedge in penetration. And so you'll often see that. Um, if you didn't have that reduction of material on the top, you would have a more triangular cross section and not a diamond cross section and of course diamond cross section knives like daggers that's that's the most uh, uh, extreme illustration of a of a diamond cross section really pun punches through and punctures into things uh, much more efficiently but uh, this is yeah I, I I the caller that I whose uh, voicemail I, I read before he was right I should have mentioned this. It is gorgeous. It is a beautiful knife. Anything uh, that Bill Harzi puts his puts his uh, pencil to and designs is beautiful and is uh, uh, emblematically or or very obviously a Bill Harzi design. And uh, of course, you have Spartan putting it together, so it's it's built like a brick shit house. I love this knife, um, and uh, I'd love to have it in S45VN because I'm discovering I really like S45VN. All right, let me pull a couple of these over here. Next is the is a similar blade, actually. It's a swedge drop point, very pointy. This is the rock wall from Tactile Knives, another great drop point knife. And uh, it's funny because when I was going through my collection, I looked at this and I was like, oh, no, 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 that's not a drop point. That's a, that's a, and in my mind, I was thinking of it as a clip point. I think something about that tip is very, uh, I don't know, it's aggressive. It's an aggressive tip. I'll just put it that way. And I don't think of drop points as aggressive blades, but as you can see from these, they are indeed. Such a great little drop point knife. You get tons of utility out of this from that ample belly, the, the nice bit of straight there, but especially that excellent point. It all fits in a juicy fruit, um, gum package it's about the same size that's what they were going for when they were designing this in terms of the size of it and uh what a great knife get on their uh wait list it is so well worth it uh, my dad's on that wait list somewhere i offered to give him this one uh, but he said no i can wait now, that's one of the things you get from age patience so uh there you go tactile turn rock wall next one is the only emerson uh, drop point that I have. And this is the, I can never quite say this, the SOCFK-1. Uh, it's like Special Operations Command Folding Knife. And not one, I meant A. A is the drop point, B is the tanto. So as you can see from, from this, a very aggressive drop point. This one does not have the wedge, But since it's at that very thin chisel ground, I have no doubt that this thing would penetrate just fine. A very sharp knife and a very, um, what do you call it? Uh, acute chisel edge here. The SOCF-A. Kind of a rare bird and I'm psyched to have it in my collection of drop points. I'm gonna put this here. See, I didn't think before doing this show that I had a collection of drop points, but quite obviously I do. Next up is the uh, ProTech, another ProTech. This is the TR2, Tactical Response 2. Oh my goodness gracious, look at this. It looks almost like a dagger. It is like a spear point for sure. 
uh, and as you know, spear points are drop points. So this has a uh, high flat grind, excuse me, a pretty thick blade stock here and a very well used knife. I bought this on the secondary market from a gentleman, I think he was in Texas and he was a farmer and he used this one harvest season. So when I got it, it was a little gritty on the open, which I loved only because I knew it was out there in the, um, in the elements getting used for hard, hard work. Uh, since getting it, I have felt, um, you know, free to use this in a quote unquote hard fashion. And for me, that means, uh, you know, I, I used it, uh, this was a painting knife. So there's some paint on there. And unfortunately it got in the knurling here and it's, I got to take a brush to it or something to get it out, but I don't want to, not ready to brush off that anodizing. So I leave it on there as a uh, remembrance of, it was a, a great time painting my daughter's room. Uh, she did a lot of the painting too. And um, this replaced the Endura, which is my classic painting knife. And uh, you know, for for edging, for putting up the tape, and then and then carving it out in such a way that you're you're being precise with it. That's what this was used for. So not hard use on my end, but it has seen hard use in the past in the great state of Texas. And that incidentally is also where the tactile knife rock wall was made. So Protec TR2, one of my favorite looking designs from from the in-house Protec design team. And uh, to me, it's also evocative of the Tops Lil Bro, which is a, a little fixed blade knife I've always wanted. Kind of looks like this or the Lil Bro kind of, it looks like the Lil Bro. I'm not sure which one came first, but another excellent drop point. Here we go. The American Blade Works Model 1. This is the version 5. A differently shaped, uh, this almost has a flat back. Uh, when you look at it, it doesn't have as much of a drop to the tip, but still a drop point. If you hold it uh, horizontally like that, you can see from the pivot all the way to the tip, there's a drop, but it's not an extreme uh, curved drop like you see on the Medford here. Um, talk about a useful knife um, and a great guy making it. These knives, uh, I think, I think, uh, he has topped out with a version six. I think version six has is the perfected version of this knife. This is the five and it's as close to perfect as I need to get. Um, when I was at Blade Show, uh, we did a little interview uh, at American Blade Works and I sort of had a chance to, well, I had a chance to pick up a whole bunch of the version six and uh, there is just a slight bit more refinement to this and, and, uh, he nailed it. Love this knife. Uh, okay, so I'm going to put that down there. Three more. Three more, and then I will get out of your ear with these drop points. But if you if you walk away with anything from this, uh, just know that the drop point comes in many faces, many shapes. Um, but they're, uh, they all seem to be extremely useful. And if you like a little menace in your knives, there are plenty of menacing drop point blades. This one is not only menacing, but super stylish. And man, this talk, we talk about grail knives, a grail, like a true grail knife for me would be a custom version from the designer of this knife. And this is the Boker Squale designed by Charles Marlowe. What a gorgeous drop point recurve blade. To me, this is one of the, one of the most handsome knives out there. I love this thing. I always mention it. it's evocative of an Italian racing boat to me. It looks like a Donzi to me. I don't know why, and I'm not much of a boat guy, but I do know that boat. I, I watched Miami Vice, and uh, I just think this thing looks like a wicked cigarette boat. I love this. And Charles Marlowe, if, if you don't follow him on Instagram, uh, you really need to because his knives, he, he, makes, uh, he makes all sorts of uh, folders, including Bally songs. They are just drop dead, gorgeous, drop dead, gorgeous. And not for nothing. He does an amazing mirror polish. Another classic drop point here is the AD 10. This is the cold steel version, but, uh, the AD 10 comes from, um, our good friend, Andrew and John Demko, uh, Demko knives. He, uh, Andrew Demko designed this and was making the custom version of this until um, 
until Cold Steel made it and then finished uh, their their partnership. Uh, he was only allowed to make this knife as long as he was uh, with Cold Steel, basically. That's the deal with the triad lock. He can't make the triad lock anymore. But he's moved on to the scorpion lock and the shark lock and has done wonderfully with that. And apparently the triad lock, which is a, an amazing lock is just so finicky and, and, and a pain in the butt to make as a custom maker that I think they're fine not making it anymore. Uh, classic drop point shape. This is one of the most useful knives uh, in my collection. This is from the first drop and it's a hollow grind and uh, looks like we lost the knife cam. So I'll show the last knife right up here. Uh, it's one you all know anyway, so you don't need to see it too close up. But uh, let me just finish with the AD10. Um, if you look here, you'll see how beautifully hollow ground this knife is. Um, now, when you buy an 8010, it's going to be uh, flat ground, which no doubt is awesome. And, you know, you'll have as much utility out of that as you have out of this. But something about that sliciness uh, of the of the hollow grind just really gets me. And this is one of my backyard knives. I use this one a lot out back. You can see some scratches. Look, I swear I use it. Um, but I love it because if you're if you're using it to cut stuff down, um, this beautifully contoured handle feels great in hand. I mean, it just feels so good in hand. And it's rock solid with that triad lock and the S35 VN steel. So I'm going to put this down. And then the last one, oh boy, the last one here is the, the Rat Model 2. The Ontario Rat, a classic, classic knife. This is the uh, the smaller version. Of course, there's the the Rat One. This one was a, a gift from my older daughter when she was little. She wanted to buy me a pink knife, and I suggested this one, and my wife got it. Uh, I call this lovingly Pinky Tuscadero because of the black and the pink. And if you're old enough to know what that is, you get it. Uh, Pinky Tuscadero is one of my favorite knives of all times. One of the one of the ones in my collection I would never give up. And uh, I was talking before about the straight-ish, the straighter spine. Some of them drop more uh, drastically, some of them hardly at all. Uh, this Rat Model 2 drops hardly at all. But you can see from, from the peak to the tip, there's a bit of a drop. And this is fully flat ground. Talk about a practical blade. Fully flat ground with that drop point it's just a classic and it's a classic for a reason. Um, feels great in hand. I, personally, if you ask me, it's not winning any beauty contests. Uh, but I know, I know some people feel differently about this knife. Um, I don't think it's very good looking at all, frankly, but man, does it feel good in hand and man, does it work great. I have a uh, bigger version of this. These, uh, all the ones I have, I have two of them and they're both OS eight. And uh, OS 8 to me, I don't really ever need much more than OS 8 steel. Uh, of course, I like to have it because I'm a bit of a blade snob and a steel snob for no apparent reason other than bragging rights, I guess. But these things cut great. The other one I have is in my car survival kit, my get home bag. And uh, that's how much I, I trust and, uh, and respect these knives. Of course, respect more than like lust after. Uh, and... Hey, that's that's really what we need out of a knife is something you can trust and something that you can count on. All right, so that is my collection. Unfortunately, uh, my camera, my knife cam has has uh, has gone out on me. I think I need to do some sort of an update on the software. But uh, so I have no final picture, final shot to show you. But just to run down the top drop points. Now there are others. There are plenty others in my collection, but these are these are the top fifteen. Um, and I'm just going to run down them real quick. The Les George VSEP, the Ritter Hogue Mini RSK Mark I, the Vero Engineering Synapse, the Medford Praetorian, even though it's a Tanto, uh, the Zero Tolerance Zero 200, the Strider SMF, the TRM Atom, the Spartan Harzi Folder, the, tactic, uh, the Tactile Knife Company Rockwall, the Emerson SOCFK-A, the Protec TR2, the American Blade Works Model 1 version 5, the Boker Squale, Cold Steel AD10, 
and the classic and not to be denied Ontario rat, in this case, Model 2. So that does it for my rundown of drop points. Let me know what your favorite drop point is, uh, which one I may have forgotten, or which one that you know I have in my collection that you rather would have seen. Uh, one runner-up, for instance, that's popping to my mind is the Spyderco Uliza, the beautiful, long, sinuous recurve. That's a drop point. Let me know on the listener line, 724-466-4487. Give me a call. Let me know which one it is. And leave your name so that I can mention it here on the podcast. And uh, whoever left that message that we featured at the top of the show, get in touch. Let me know who you are so I can mention your name here on the show. Uh, so also be sure that you join us uh, for episode 232 of the uh, Knife Junkie podcast. Coming up this coming Sunday, we have Peter Carey, a classic uh, tactical knife maker. I mean, Peter Carey, my God, you know who he is and uh, you know his knives, but find out the man himself. He's a really cool cat. Uh, it took a long time to get him on the show. Uh, lots of things got in the way uh, along the way, uh, but I was so thrilled to finally get him on the show and had a great conversation with him. So check out Peter Carey this coming Sunday. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and check us out tomorrow night on Thursday Night Knives right here, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live. Come on, join the conversation. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you here next week right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.